Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Okay, so it's going to be Alan Weiselberg again. But, I mean, things change. I mean, there's different colors that have come into the picture. So we don't know, is he, has he been cooperating, actually, for a while? Um, is he bringing some other people into it? Uh, did he order a, uh, an appetizer of calamari? Let's see. So just to refresh your memory, you know, I've, I've read on him a couple of times. And so I've got some information, and maybe some of you didn't hear it before. But I'll tell you again now what I've got. So his name is Alan Howard uh, Weiselberg. He was born on August 15, 1947. He's the Chief Financial Officer, CFO, of the Trump Organization. And he's also co-trustee of a trust set up by, uh, in 2017 by, the Donald Trump, uh, by Donald Trump before the Trump inauguration. So I guess he was co-trustee of the trust that was set up for the businesses that the kids ran with him also. But maybe that's not current now. So... That's something to think about. Now, he was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he grew up in Brownsville. Uh, and then he received an accounting degree from Pace University in 1970. Now, uh, the 1970s, following college, he worked as an accountant for Fred Trump. And then in the 80s, he was made the controller of the organization. Then 2000, he was named Chief Financial Officer and Vice President of Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts. So that's Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts. He also was a board member and served as treasurer of the Donald J. Trump Foundation. I mean, his fingers are everywhere. And then 2017, he claimed in a dis, uh, deposition to New York State investigators that he wasn't aware even he was a board member for at least the last 10 or 15 years. What does that mean? I, I'm not, he wasn't aware, he, at least the last 10, I don't know what that means. Uh, he's also, uh, he also handled the household expenses for the Trumps. Now, along with Donald Trump, he's one of the two trustees of a New York-based uh, revocable trust that in turn owns DT Connect Member Corp. DT, what in the world could that stand for? DT Connect Member Corp. But anyway, in, in January 2017, the Trump Organization announced that Weiselberg would manage the company along with Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. during Trump's presidency. Remember, Ivanka went to work for the country, and um, so it was just the uh, three of them uh, supposedly running uh, the place uh, in 2017 until, I guess, the president's over. How did he take over? But anyway, in 2018, a summary of trust arrangements lists Weiselberg and Donald Trump Jr. as trustees of the and Eric Trump, Trump as advisor. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, the summary also indicated that as trustees, only Weiselberg and Jr. knew the details of the trust finances, and he lives, uh, Weiselberg lives, on uh, Long Island. Been there since 2005. But then more recently, you know, there's been all the talk about one of his son's um, divorce problems with his ballerina or ex-ballerina wife. And uh, so she's revealed a lot of documents and turned all that over. And then his other son runs some sort of financial corporation that has loaned Trump money. So let's take a look at this and see has he flipped or has he flopped. It's pretty bad. Sorry. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versa Tarot. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So Massimiliano, Filadoro, Lunea, Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook, easy to read, um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again, have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with. But what I really love about these cards, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's so this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card. And then there's a that side, which is in, indicated by a little embellishment, embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the, and there's no right and there's no wrong, there's no good and there's no bad. 
It's just that um, a different um, view on how to divine this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them, you know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. If that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are. Because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out because there's a this and a that side. And uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. And uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them. Okay, so this and that, this and that, we'll have to see, because, you know, let's face it, he's a flip-flop, right? So why wouldn't these cards be perfect for him? Okay, so is he going to save the kids? Is he lying to Trump every single day? Is he bringing some more folks in him? Did he order an appetizer? The company always pays. So Alan Weiselberg, what, what, what have you worked out, buddy? You're smarter than everybody. You always were. You've always known you were. This idiot that uh, somehow fell into making all this money, you know you're the one who was uh, finding all the ways to save money, to finagle, to get these deals done and skim some out of there. You know it was you. You know it was you. And this is your final chance to pin it on the idiot and maybe save your butt. You might not have anything else, but Maybe you'll save you and your kids from going to jail. Let's see if that's how this works out. So we'll take six cards right off the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know if that's his plan. He has to reel and be chuckling uh, under his breath uh, every time uh, he meets with Trump. And he knows Trump is squirming. So what's the signifier? Alan Weisel, the question is, Alan Weiselberg, uh, have you had this in the works all along to save you and the kids? And uh, are you just watching Trump uh, squirm and waiting for that last minute when you, can, when you can just look at him and smirk? Alan Weiselberg, signifier. Okay, so the signifier here is the Four of Swords, and it does seem appropriate. You know, the Four of Swords is the fellow, Swords of Truth, Justice Rules, but the Four of Swords is the fellow who uh, doesn't get up too soon at his own peril. I mean, he can get stuck by these swords. And look, Rome is burning uh, outside the window. Everything is burning up in smoke. So he just sat down, he's taking his time, he's being very calm, and he's just gonna let things pass until it's the right time that he can get up without a problem. That's the signifier of Isaac Allen Weiselberg. Yeah, this has been in the plan. The uh, challenge to that then is the night uh, is this the knight or the page? This would have to be a page of uh, wands. You know, wands are plans, action, movement. Um, wow, and the page is the challenge to that. So bringing forward this information, could this be a spy in the camp with a plan of his own? Let's leave it right there for, for now. The um, base of this reading then, ah, yeah, that's why. Because at this moment, you're feeling a uh, trap. And you know, I haven't made attention to this and to that side of these cards. Um, th this seems fine so far. Right here, you're feeling a uh, trap. And look at that. That's the symbol of the United States, the, uh, the evil. So um, you're feeling bound up, but you know that you can wriggle out of these, these binds uh, very easily. And uh, this woman isn't, um, isn't uh, under the impression that she's bound up. This woman knows um, just exactly uh, how to finish this thing off. Uh, the past of this reading then is going to be the uh, Three of Cups. So the past was celebration. So that was, I guess that was when uh, you and everybody in the organization was, you know, clicking your, your glasses and, and congratulating each other on the job well done. We skimmed quite a bit off of that one, didn't we? Now the sky of this reading 
is um, the Ace of Cups. So this is a great big fountain of emotion. I mean, what could be more impassioned than knowing what was going on, knowing that you, you're caught, and knowing that you're going to have a way to get out of it, and maybe those other people won't. Hmm, that's interesting. So the likely outcome of all of this for the first part of this Celtic Cross, Alan Weiselberg, have you had this in the plan all along, is uh, having to make a choice, you know, the two swords, you know, having to make a choice. And um, one was going to be a little bit easier, one was going to be a little more fire. And I think you took the easier route, and uh, but it's going to pay off in the end. You watch. So now the self of this is I want to know right now, have you, is, is this going to save you and the kids? Is this going to save you and the kids? And uh, I don't think I can uh, get an answer in here about whether he brought Calamari into this, but we'll see how it works out. So the self of this, the self of this uh, right now is uh, Alan Weiselberg. Okay, he's in suspension, but he's looking ahead at this. You know, there's two sides of this card. There's this one right here where he's kind of looking back, and there's this one right here which shows him looking into the dark, you know, looking the other way. And you know what? He's looking at his two sons. That's exactly what this is. This is him. He's in suspension right now. He's got to look at it a little bit of a different way. And this is his two boys. Uh, what is that in the environment of? That's the environment of um, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ah, death. The end. That's the environment of the end. He sees it. It's, he's, he's seen that the end is here, and he's made this arrangement. Look at this. It's, yeah, he's made this arrangement um, to save his kids. He sure has. And if he's brought somebody else into it, that could be what's represented here. We'll have to see, or by the skull. Um, so that's what this environment is. The hopes and the fears for all of this, then, is going to be, ah, yeah, getting getting the job perfected. This is the Eight of Coins, and the Eight of Coins is always talks about, you know, practicing your craft, getting down right, being the apprentice, learning what you're doing. But look at these coins. These are faded. You know, these are a memory. This is what was done in the past. And um, yeah, so so this Eight of Coins is talking about, yeah, I did it. I perfected all that. I made these arrangements. I got it just right. And uh, and um, yeah, that's what this is about. I still don't have an answer about whether he brought somebody else in the organization in, uh, which would be Matt, Matt uh, or Order of Appetizer. Um, let's see, right here. The likely outcome of all of this is things uh, moving along. You know, this is a casual, this is a leisurely uh, stroll in the evening. And I say there's no rush about this. Um, he's, he's made an agreement, he's sworn an oath, and, um, and he's guiding He's guiding his boys, he's guiding his kids, he's guiding this chariot right out through the darkness. Yeah, I think uh, he's got this really under control, just like he always, always had. So yeah, I didn't, we didn't get an answer about whether he brought, uh, whether he ordered the appetizers, but, but I think he is saving the kids. He got the kitty meals. Um, he was, it starts out with him as just being so cautious. Don't get up too soon. Um, he uh, is trapped, but he knows he can shake loose of those binds. Um, and the self right now, he's just in a holding pattern. Those are his two kids right there waiting to see what's going to happen. And this one right now, the death card, the environment that he's in, it's over. And the kids are on the outside. So that's good. And perhaps that, uh, that uh, maybe in the back or that skull in the foreground uh, depicts uh, that maybe he brought somebody else into it. I'm just not sure. But uh, in any event, the hopes and the fears, he honed his craft. I mean, he got it down as well as anybody could. But you can see those are faded coins. That was in the past. And uh, right now, he's taking his time. He's going to uh, guide uh, this chariot uh, carefully through the night. And uh, because he's made an oath, he's sworn an oath uh, to somebody uh, right here. So, yeah, it's done. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.